Well, hello everyone and welcome to our webinar. I'm Terry Roberts with DMAI. We are the Trade Association for the Convention and Visitors Bureau industry. And welcome to the 10 stupid things we all do to mess up our site inspections. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors today, both ePro Direct and Chris Wessel, who will be talking to us a little bit later on, and always MPI, who sponsors our webinar each month. So thank you both. And I would also, at this time, like to welcome our panelists. And um, I'd like to introduce you to my friend and compadre, Margie Sitton. Margie is the Senior Vice President of Sales and Services at the San Diego Tourism Authority and Margie um, has I guess jokingly referred to decades of serving this industry. Um, she has been um, in the last eight years um, at the helm at the SDTA and before that she spent 12 years in the hospitality business on the hotel side of the business both with Hilton and Starwood Resorts. Margie is the creator of the highly regarded site inspection experience in the San Diego destination and the award-winning iLead system there. Last year she launched another program in her destination called San Diego Meeting Certified. So she brings a lot of expertise to the table and um, she's always a good time too. So welcome Margie. Thanks Terry. Glad to be here. So our roadmap today um, I think that the site inspection, I always refer to it as a critical time in the meeting sourcing process. It's kind of where you planners can literally see the program coming to life. It's kind of during the process where planners determine whether what they are envisioning on paper or what they have experienced in the past is going to be able to come alive. It's going to be executed, attract their attendees, and please all their stakeholders. So that's no small task. Margie and I worked together on the site in experience rollout in San Diego and we actually staged a production called the 10 stupid things we do to mess up our site inspections. We had a little fun um, taking some jabs at some of perhaps the all too familiar site inspection processes um, that work perhaps in some unwise practices. And so we took this time honored practice of the site inspection that can have the tendency to be a lot of walking and talking and pointing and really try to sift it down to, to the essentials. So today we hope to point out some of those 10 stupid things and then give you some planner difference makers. What are some things that you can do as planners to take control the, of the process a little bit more? And many of them, as you will see, um, are things that you actually put in motion before you're on the ground in the destination. So Margie, let me start by asking you a question. When you first decided to revamp the process and pull things apart in San Diego, what motivated you? What in inspired you to kind of start a site experience there? Terry, when I arrived at the San Diego Tourism Authority in 2008, it was good news, bad news. The good news is I had this great new job. Uh, helping a city book more business. The bad news was that we had the huge uh, problem with no meetings. We had a great recession going on. The government was saying meetings were uh, uh, boondoggles. You couldn't go to certain cities. And so the hotel community came to me and said, okay, what are you going to do about it? And what campaign can we put together? What ads can we put in? What publications? And it occurred to me that there was no ad that was going to have a meeting planner come to San Diego. What we needed to do at our very core was fix something that we had no process for, and that was the site inspection. We had to learn to take care of the customer that was in market with us right there. And if we could make sure that every customer that came and looked at our hotels or venues left thinking, oh my gosh, how can I not pick San Diego? That would be better than any ad we can put together. So we put a process together. We held everyone accountable. We put our my own team, we had what was they had to be accountable what they, they were going to send to find from the hotels, what, what they were going to find for the hotels, what they were going to learn about that customer, what their needs were very specifically. We had this mantra that one size doesn't fit all. It had to be tailored to what the meeting planner needs were. We gave that information to the hotel. We held them accountable to make sure that they understood. And then we even asked our planners, and we still do this day, that after they left a site with a certain uh, at a certain hotel, how did the salesperson do? Did they was it a good use of your time? Did you see what you needed to see? Did they give you a wow? Did they want your business? And 
we called it, if the, if the uh, salesperson got a perfect 10, we rewarded them for being creative and a consultant to that customer, and uh, we rewarded the behavior. And we still use it today, and if I ever try to stop it, I get the hotel planner, the hotel community kind of yells at me like, no, 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 this keeps us on target, doing what we need to do best. Pretty interesting. So today we're going to share with our audience what you learned in that process. So before we do that, I'd like to get a little bit of a feeling for how our audience feels. So I'd like to launch a poll and ask you to go to your GoToMeeting dashboard and participate by answering this question. What do you feel contributes most to a poor site inspection experience? And I've given you some opportunities to um, vote there. So things from time not being managed to staff not being prepared to and introductions not being um, made. So uh, planners, if you'll take a moment, those of you who are participating online today and vote, we would really appreciate it. We'll give you a, just a, a quick couple of seconds. People are voting quickly, so go ahead and choose your biggest deterrent, and we will go from there. Looks like many of you are Honing into staff preparedness, which is a little scary. So um, a little, almost 75% of our audience has voted, so I'll give you just another second. If you would like to vote, please vote now. A few of you still finding your vote button. Terrific, I'm going to close the poll now. So the uh, the... Uh, poll has been closed. Now I'd like to share it with you. So a whopping 50% of you indicate that you feel that the staff was not well prepared for your visit, um, followed by a, a close tie between time not being managed effectively, too much telling and not enough showing, and then um, not really being left with a lasting impression. So that's great information, um, Margie, for you to share with your team and your destination as well. So, Margie, let's um, let's talk a little bit about what we found because I know when I was working with you and your site and, um, experience team, I did about oh I don't know maybe 20 or so site inspections over about a three day period, and I definitely felt like that there was a little bit of this peacock syndrome going on, and I feel like this is the number one deterrent for a good site inspection is that you've got a lot of well meaning. Um, hospitable folks who are proud of their products, proud of their cities, proud of their hotels, but they do a lot of feather ruffling. They paint beautiful pictures, but no matter how beautiful that picture is they paint, it doesn't necessarily fit the frame that the planner brings with them, right? So if the picture doesn't fit the frame, the planner goes off to look for another frame. So what? Would, how would you interpret what you think really is, is that deterrent? I think too many salespeople try to do one size fits all for all their sites. And one of the things that has, I'm sure many of the planners think is pretty hysterical too, don't you hate going to a hotel that's just done a renovation? Because everybody's excited about the new chandelier or the new color of the carpet or the new guest room that has a coffee maker. And those are expectations you would expect. So where's the wow in that? What are they? You can see that. They don't have to tell you about that. And it's so critical for you to be able to make a decision at that hotel. You're not going to make it based on the wallpaper or the color of the chandelier or where the chandelier is. You're going to make it on the critical assets of that hotel and whether it fits your needs. It's sort of like going to, the, going to Honey Baked Ham to get a ham. So how many of you have done this? You go on Thanksgiving or Easter and the lines are long and you say, I need a ham. And they go, how many people? And you say, 20 people. And they give you the ham that you need. The next year, and Terry, you tell the story so great. The next year you go back and say, I guess I need a 20-pound ham, and the gal behind the counter goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need more. I need, to more, need more about what you're doing. Are you doing an afternoon event? Is it a dinner that you're serving? Will you have other things that you're serving? Will you have a turkey or a prime rib? How many children? How many men? What time of day? How many sides are you going to have? And wouldn't you go, wow, this is a great experience. This person really cares about my event and that my Easter dinner is going to be perfect. 
And that's what we should do at the hotel level, is that we should ask you those critical questions, and you should provide that answer to us so that we can make it a good use of your time and be prepared and solve this problem of so many people thinking the staff is not well prepared. It's a two-way street. We both have to help each other achieve that. I, I love that, and, and I do love that ham story. It actually happened to me. So, Margie, I'm excited to talk to planners about the 10 stupid things we've done or we do because we have done this many times before, but always to a destination audience or a hotel audience. So our goal here is to talk about these 10 stupid things and then talk about the planner difference maker. What can a planner do to skew um, the site inspection in a more positive direction? So I feel like everything starts with a great first impression, but often we miss an opportunity for great first impressions. Margie, what do you perceive as the planner control factor, the planner difference maker to this, this number one factor? I believe that going into this business meeting with a hotel, everyone should share what needs to be accomplished. And the best first impression a planner can make to the hotel is to be fully outright of what they need to see, what their expectations are, what their pain points may be, uh, who they need to meet, who they don't need to meet, and just really say, this is what I want to achieve uh, when I come out for my site. I sometimes think that conversation doesn't take place. So given their own guidance, the salespeople make it up, which is not a good use of anyone's time. So as your first impression to the hotel, being very thoughtful and upfront about what needs to be accomplished and uh, what the minimum you need to see and what priority that you need to see them will set a good first impression for the hotel. And that way you can see how much they're listening to you and if they really uh, have the wherewithal to do the right thing for your meeting. Great. So the second stupid thing, um, I think, is that we don't often make meaningful introductions. And introductions are awkward, and people stand around with nothing to do. There's a lot of handshaking, and this is our general manager, and this is our director of food and beverage, and so what? <laughs> and so, so what? And so what? So what? So what? So what does the planner do to make a difference in how introductions happen? Well, with what I just said, again, I think you need to say, I need to meet the AV people. This is when I need to see them. This is the part of the site experience when we're in the ballroom or in the conference area that I need them to come in and help me answer these questions. And the more that you can give them what you're going to ask, what you need, what those pain points are, what comfort you need to get from them, then the business discussion will be much more fruitful. And if you don't need to see um, the room service person or the head of the bell staff, which a lot of people like to tag on, just say that. I don't have a lot of time. These are the people I need to see. And if they can provide me this kind of information, we can have a, a very efficient site. And I always laugh when the general manager comes up and goes, I'm the general manager, and I've been here, and our scores have gone up, and you're in good hands with Terry. Well, then go away. You didn't bring any value. <laughs> Why are you so, here? Why are you here? So we ask the hotel people to make sure that when any of their staff do meet you because you've requested it, that they bring value to the conversation. You walk away going, it was good that I put that person on my team. So what? All right. Excellent. I love that one. The third stupid thing I think that we do, and um, it's wasting time, right? That we don't show things that are of pertinence, um, and we don't necessarily hit the points, but we, again, this is really the peacock thing, where we spend a lot of time showing what we're proud of or what we think is great about the property or the destination, but we aren't taking it from the planner perspective. So what is the difference maker here in your opinion? I would ask, as a planner, um, how busy is your hotel that day? Because these are the items I absolutely have to see. These are the deal breakers. I'm not coming to your property if I can't see the ballroom or the breakout space or the venue space or the certain kind of hospitality suite, whatever it may be. So you need to um, make sure that you prioritize the key things that you need to see and also the things you don't need to see. And um, make sure the hotel is prepared to show you um, it, in that priority. Because if you do run out of time, if some sites go over, at least you can see three or five of the things that you need to see, not maybe everything. And you can walk away with a good sense. But it's really important to prioritize your checklist and give it to the hotel sales manager and hold them accountable to, uh, to understand what you need to see. I think that's a great point. I do see a lot of lists of things, but I rarely see them prioritized. Prioritize, right. All right, so now we're going to hit the audience difference maker because the whole 50% half of you said that you don't think that the hotels um, are knowledgeable, well-prepared, 
Um, so, Margie, how can a planner um, make a difference in terms of making sure that there isn't a lot of basic fact-finding going on during the site? Well, I would suggest that you don't hold back, that you, you tell the hotel salesperson, or if you're working with a convention center or convention uh, bureau salesperson, tell them what you need. Tell them what your pain points are. Don't leave it to be a mystery or an aha moment later. See, these are the demographics. This is what's going on with my company. This is what's important this year. And I want you to understand that if we can't achieve these things, or if we can't achieve these things, then it's going to be a, uh, your, your hotel's going to be my preference. But make the hotel then understand, if once you tell them all the things you really want them to know and, and you don't hold back, then it's up to them to be creative in showing how your meeting or conference can work at that hotel based on those uh, attendee preferences that you have in the demographics. And I've seen a lot of RFPs in my life, and and many times they do include hot buttons, but then you see the hot buttons say things like resort atmosphere, rates, service. Well, what I think is excellent service or what is critical service delivery to me and what it is to you may be vastly different. What I consider a resort to be and what your attendees these may think a resort is. So I not only think that you need to share this information, but you need to share the intricacies of the information as well. The one that always makes my heart stop is where it says rate. What does that mean? Rate. Because rate to one customer can be, I, I'm used to going to a Four Seasons five-star property, so rate in the 300s, 500s is not a problem to me, but you know, I don't want it to be 700, or it could be someone that says, I don't want to spend more than $125 because my attendees come from this situation or they pay for it themselves. All that data that we can give to the hotels so that they can uh, hone their site is so critical to making the right decision for you. It is. So we're halfway through our list now. So the fifth stupid thing that I think that we do is we're not really conducting a site inspection that at every point is moving the decision-making process forward. So how do you feel that um, planners can better articulate what their decision process even is? Well, so often uh, you talk to a hotel salesperson after a site and it's uh, it's their fault, but they don't know how the decision is going to be made. They don't know who's going to make the decision or when or how or anything like that. And that has to be part of that business discussion I think everybody should plan to have while you're doing a site experience or a site inspection at a hotel. So here's what will happen next. Here's who has to be involved. Here's how I recommend. Here's the time frame. And that, that should be the last thing that everyone has uh, on the same page, that's on the same page about at the end of that site. So that you don't have all these, um, well, I don't know who's going to do this, or I didn't ask the hotel that. I mean, you just want to have it all locked up so that when you leave, you have all the information you need, and so does the hotel, so they can send you the proposal that is something that you've already pre-agreed to, and there's and, no surprises. Right, and that the um, follow-up then becomes appropriate and timely. Exactly. So this is one of my pet peeves. Um, I think back to way, way long ago. This is going to tell you how old I am, but when Tom Selleck had that... Um, show called Hotel, and, oh. the, and the little gal walked around with the clipboard and, and walked and pointed and stated the obvious. So um, how does a planner, there's just that cadence that site inspections have. You meet in the lobby, you say hello, you exchange business cards, you start walking, the hotel person walks backwards and points at a lot of stuff. How does the planner break up that cadence and really make sure that they have the lay of the land? Many of the best site experience programs I go on myself, when you meet in the lobby, the first thing you do is sit down and go through the agenda for the site and what uh, all the expectations. So if a salesperson says, okay, let's get going, let me show you that chandelier, let's go down to the ballroom, I would recommend that you say, let's just sit for a minute and make sure we're on the same page. Let's get over, let's go over the things that I really need to see. And quite frankly, things could have changed. You may have gone to two or three other hotels prior, and something else could have been a, a new priority for you because you may not see what you think of the other hotels, or something's come up that you hadn't thought of. So let's just sit down together and talk about the, the, how the direction of the site will go, what you need to see, what's available, what's not available, and hold them accountable to make sure that they've given you the right material for you to be able to take notes along the way, that you, that you both are in agreement that when you start this business discussion together, that it's on the right path and you both have the same goals to achieve.
Great point. I, I like the way that you made that point that site inspections are dynamic, they are organic. As you start to see things or not see things in a destination, things do change. Um, I also remember being on a site inspection um, at one of your resorts properties in San Diego that's really confusing. I mean, a lot of these hotels, their layouts are really confusing. And what really impressed me on this site was the hotel sales manager and the destination sales manager sitting down with a schematic and kind of drawing on this, you know, board how it all lays out, where the, you know, like, so I could kind of look from an aerial view, like, okay, here's the ballroom, here's the guest space, here's your outdoor space, and, and I was able to see that all come together. So I really think the best thing you can do to begin a site inspection is just sit down a minute. Sit down and make sure you're on the same page. Sit down a minute. Um, all right, number seven, we are not well prepared. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. It's such a sad thing. Um, several things we've talked about already help the preparedness, and if you provide that information and hold the hotel salesperson accountable to make sure they understand that, you'll be able to sense from them when you arrive if they are committed to that process and that they are prepared as you wanted them to do. That preparedness on the site gives you a key indication of how prepared they'd be if you hosted your meeting with them. So that's a critical thing. And things change at a hotel, talking about being organic. The, ho the room that you thought you were going to see might not be available anymore. Those things should be discussed in advance and the hotel salesperson should say here's my my fallback because I can't show you this space now because the group stayed over another day or whatever may have happened here is here's pictures of it here's diagrams of it here's a portion of it that I can show you but don't go up to the ballroom and go to the peephole and say oh it's <laughs> occupied or you know knock knock guest room oh, oh it's occupied I mean they should have that all prepared I'm going to show you the suite first, and uh, because we have a guest coming in, so let's let's rearrange our site so I can show it to you and get that done, so that we don't miss that opportunity. But just they do need to be prepared, and the best preparedness is to understand what you need to accomplish at your meeting, what your goals are, and they can only do that if they ask or if you tell them. All right, I'm going to tell the planners with us today that I'll tell you exactly what I tell my kids. If it's not good on the first date, it's not getting any better after. <laughs> So, you know, this is your best foot forward. So, you know, you should really be taking some notes about how things go. So, Margie, when we staged our, um, we actually staged a production, a comedic production in San Diego for the hotel community when we launched the site inspection process, the new revised experience. And we staged a comedic pro uh, production with professional actors and actresses, and we called it the 10 stupid things we do to mess up our site inspections. And we got the biggest laugh from the audience when the planner entered stage left, laden down with bags, brochures, cards, dolphins and whales, and all kinds of other stuffed and animals. Cookies, cookies and mimosas. Cookies and mimosas. So we do dump a lot of cards, brochures, and amenities. What would be your advice to planners to control this particular factor? You know, I think we all try to be really nice and gracious. And we're in the hospitality business, which is inherently nice and gracious. But I do think, as you can tell, that I think this is a business meeting that you're having. And it's appropriate for you to say, I don't want to take anything home with me. I'm traveling light. Whatever you send to me should be sent digitally and or shipped to me. And just say that in advance. I mean, this is a green society now. You don't want heavy books and brochures and, and stuff. You just don't need it. And then if you're staying in the hotel and you know they're going to give you an amenity, you you know, I think it's really appropriate. If they, if they haven't asked you what your preference is in advance, um, then it's appropriate for you to say, you know, I don't drink. I would like some uh, sparkling water and some fruit because I'm on a, you know, I, I try to eat healthy, whatever it may be, so that um, everybody's on the same page. And I think that's really fair. I have to tell you, when I was with Starwood and I would travel so much, most everyone knows that I really enjoy a nice Chardonnay. And I always would laugh when I'd walk into the room and there'd be a bottle of Cabernet. And I'm like, really? Wow, they didn't pay attention, and, and it just sewed attention to detail. So I think it's okay for you to say in advance, here's what I like, here's what I don't like. And then if they say, well, I was planning to bring, you know, give you uh, uh, a book on San Diego, whatever it may be, say that's great, but can you send it to me afterwards? Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, number 10, stupid thing, or number 9, stupid thing. Now I'm not counting. Um, this is really key. I think that site inspections tend, as you said, to be hospitable deals, right? Oftentimes the planner's being hosted, has been flown in, there's nice accommodations, 
Um, and I find there is a resistance to, during the site process, um, addressing some of the hard stuff, you know, attrition, cancellation, food and beverage minimums, um, ancillary fees, all things that are critical in this seller's marketplace. So the planner goes back with a nice, fluffy, warm-hearted feeling, and then all of a sudden half the things they thought were going to work fall apart because when really the pencil meets the paper, it doesn't, it doesn't work out. Well, again, if we look at these site experience, site inspections as a business conversation that you're having, you wouldn't walk away from buying a car without knowing all those details. It's the same thing, even more critical, uh, is to go through the details of cancellations, ancillary fees, minimums on food and beverage, and, and to make sure that the team and the person you're dealing with has the ability to make those commitments. You know, revenue managers rule the world these days, so you need to walk away knowing what kind of rate you are going to be confirmed, not that they go back and negotiate on your behalf. That should all be done up front. <coughs> one of the best sites we ever did in San Diego, one of my best stories, is we were dealing with a customer who was a third party, and they all but decided to pick a hotel outside of our city. And then one of our great salespeople on my team convinced them to take a look at one of our hotels that, quite frankly, they weren't all that excited about. But we knew it could work. It was 8,000 room nights, and it was six weeks away. So it was a key thing for us to get into the destination. And when the, the hotel was really well prepared for what they needed, they had some nuances that were unique to their meeting and to most meetings. And so at the end of the showing how the hotel would flow in their in, at the property, they sat down in a conference room. The general manager literally rolled up his sleeves. He brought the key people in from accounting. There was an accounting practice that they needed to have accomplished. Brought in the AV, whoever it was that needed to be there. And they sat there and said, we're going to hash this out to make sure that you feel comfortable, that we can achieve all of your goals, create a wow, and then some. And the customer said to me, I could not pick that hotel. They did everything I needed. My hotel of preference, I got a flyby by the general manager. I got a nod from the director of sales, but I didn't get that commitment that we're going to make this work, even though I thought it would work beautifully. So we were able to win that meeting, and then they came back the next year to San Diego. So we were pretty excited about that. Well, flyby leads me to my next and last and final stupid thing I think we do. Um, everybody's trying to wow. And I see WOWs taking the um, human flesh form of things like staff lining up. I've seen, clap, I've seen staff clap. I've seen clap, uh, staff sing. I've seen planes fly by. I've seen all kinds of uh, toasts. And uh, I've seen things floating in pools <laughs> and flying off rooftops. But when you're really talking about a WOW, Margie, What's the planner difference maker? How do you think a planner can make sure that the wow is tangible and not so fluffy? Well, I have to tell you one example. We just had a site at one of our resort hotels, and the general manager and the director of sales met the customer and said, okay, now we're going to give you our dog and pony show. And we were like, really? We walked around the corner, and they had a dog and pony doing a show. <laughs> it was really impressive. <laughs> but, but, you know, at the end of the day, no dogs, ponies, banners will ever make you want to pick a hotel unless the wow that you get is you, that they wow you that they want your business. So I think it's great for a planner to say, when I leave your hotel, I want to ensure that you want my business, and then at the end of the day, I know it can work better at your hotel than anybody else. You need to challenge them to be creative with any solutions that they need to come up with for a space that might not be perfect at your hotel, but where the location is or whatever it may be. And I think that's a business decision again. That's a business conversation. Here's what I need to have a wow at your hotel. I need to walk away knowing that even though the ballroom isn't as big as I need it, you can make it work. That um, you don't have as many suites as my program needs, but you can do this instead. And that's the wow I would think that you, I mean, the wows are all great with all the other things, but knowing that they want your business and can execute your business, I think is the biggest wow we can provide you. And I think you can ask for that. Yeah, and demonstrate, right? Demonstrate exactly. how you're going to make it work. The number one thing I think planners can do to ensure they have a great site inspection, I wholeheartedly believe this, is to ask folks like Margie, San Diego Tourism Authority, all of the other destinations who are um, proud and vested in the meetings marketplace. They all have representatives um, through the DMOs, through the CVBs, who will help showcase the city and its offerings. So for those of you who are interested in connecting with destination experts, <coughs> EFI has uh, brought them all together on one web portal for you, and that is Empowerment 
www.ncpsa.com. So we hope that you'll visit us there um, to search and find what you're looking for and to connect with people like Margie and her staff. Um, thank you so much. Um, we had a really a, a record registration and now a record attendance for this webinar. So we are thrilled with that. You, I'm sure many of you will be looking for the half hour of um, CMP credit that you earned under Domain H, which is Site Management. And look in your um, email next week. We'll have it, uh, your certificate will come, uh, along with the recording of this webinar that we hope you'll share with your staff or your peers. And uh, look for it next week. And and again, check your spam because we often find um, those planners who can't find it located there. So um, Christine Shimasaki and Elaine have uh, been running our question board, and um, they're gonna we're gonna take some Q and A with Margie. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and type them in now or comments. And while we're just getting our last questions typed in, I would like to again um, introduce Chris. Um, with the founder of ePro, and uh, Chris, give you about a minute to um, talk to our audience. Sure. Thank you so much, Terry. And, and once again, you guys, I mean, I'm on these every month, and you guys do such a terrific, terrific job. And, and Margie, I have to say, you totally hit the nail on the head. I come from the Marriott background and Marriott sales for 15 years at different properties, and have done the site inspections, and some went great and some didn't. And it, it, it's interesting because it is probably one of the most critical parts of the sales process. And you know, I was thinking about it as you were talking, and it really applies to everything. I mean, we are a 15-year-old hospitality marketing agency, and we sell both to meeting planners and meeting suppliers. We offer meeting suppliers, uh, email marketing services, uh, targeting meeting planners for group business, and then we also offer event apps, and, and that's kind of what I wanted to touch on today. But it's, it's, it's funny how it's very relatable. It's not about feature, I call it feature puking, or that's what we used to call it with Marriott. You call it peacocking, whatever it may be. Um, but the point is really, is really critical. It's uncovering needs and fulfilling needs. And you know, when we started with our event apps, we actually uh, polled uh, our database of subscribers. We have about 80,000 uh, meeting plan of subscribers and asked them what would be in the perfect event app. And we took that information and handed it to our uh, development team, and they went ahead and built exactly what meeting planners wanted. And we felt like that was the best way for us to build a platform based on exactly what was most important and critical to meeting planners. Uh, the one area we focused mostly on was making the process very, very simple for event organizers. We understand that event apps have been uh, are, are a brand new and additional task to, uh, to conference organizers and uh, knowing that they are already tasked with so much, it was critical for us to make that process uh, from very beginning to, to the very end uh, very simple. So um, we built our product based on the feedback from planners, just like everyone that's on the phone now, and, um, and, and we've, we've had some, some pretty incredible success with it. Uh, every one of our apps are custom built, uh, again, designed around the needs, the very specific needs of organizers and their specific attendees. Um, and if anyone has uh, any interest in researching an event app, I'd encourage you to do a, de uh, a demo with one of our account executives. You can feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email is chris.wesel at eprodirect.com. That's E-P-R-O-D-I-R-E-C-T dot com. Or you can go to uh, our website, eprodirect.com, and you'll see uh, Inspire Mobile is our, our mobile app product. Um, but thank you again very, very much. You guys, again, did a terrific job, and we really appreciate the partnership as well. Thank you, Chris. Always nice to have you. All right, uh, Shimo, we got some great questions in the question board, so I'm going to turn it over to you. But first of all, I have to thank, um, okay, now I'm looking for your name. Um, one of, of our planners pointed out that um, it wasn't um, Tom Selleck, it was James Brolin on Hotel. That's right. That's right. I always think about him being on Marcus Well BMD. Oh my God, how old are we? You know, my favorite line from that show is when she came up to the desk with her clipboard and said to whoever spread the front desk, we have 3,000 people checking in. Do what you need to do to prepare for them. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah. So, okay, Shimo, any any other comments or questions uh, besides the difference between uh, Tom Selleck and James Brolin. Well, we've had a, a lot of great comments, you know, people chiming in on some of the comments and stupid things that you were pointing out and what could planners do to take control. And Jeff, for example, says he really 
work through the CDB to make sure that they schedule things around his time um, and that he doesn't book out uh, every minute while he's in that destination because he needs the downtime. So again, illustrating that use your CDB to really control what experience you want to see. So I thought that was really a great comment, Jeff, so thank you for that. And I think also, um, you know, there's some touchy questions that um, I don't know whether or not sometimes this kind of contributes to the madness, Margie, but, you know, how do you really go about having some difficult conversations? Like you start off on the site inspection and you really know right away it's not going to work. Do you have to just grind it out and, and go throughout the whole site inspection or what can a planner do in that situation? You know, that is such a great question. Like, if I'm on the site and I know it's not going to work, like, do I have to? How long do I have to stay, Margie? You don't. I mean, it's not a good use of anyone's time. It's not a good use of the salesperson's time or yours, which is more important. But I think, again, if we take a look at these not as the hospitality, everybody has to be nice and do nice things to each other, and just be able to say, you know, I believe this was going to work, but now that I see it, it just really isn't. So let's kind of let's just not prolong the agony because it's not going to be any better when you tell them the next day that their hotel's not going to work. And again, I think if we just like if we are if we are uh, gracious about it and just say that, um, then you know there's no reason for you to to waste your time. And one of the things that we do in San Diego is we when you come out on a site with uh, through our organization, we have someone assigned to you to take you and be your advocate and be your counselor if you will, as you go from hotel to hotel. We keep the hotels on time. We make sure they don't overload you with, you know, another smoothie when you arrive because you're done. We want to make sure that you have that downtime that you require and want. We don't we don't force you to have dinner with the hotel or us if you're if you want that downtime. But we also are the ones that can step in and say, you know, uh, Terry's I don't think this is going to work for you, Terry. Let us be the bad guys, but be the honest bad guys and, and move on from that site and go to where you need to be. That's a great example, Margie, that you can really use your destination rep to control we right? and let them be the bad guy. And when we first started the program, the hotels were a little resistant, saying, well, I don't need your team, you know, helping us. And I said, well, actually, my team is helping the destination if you decide to lose it for us. So we are taking control of it. So we can say we need to move on if we have to. Well, you know, that... Any other questions? And, you know, that that is a, um, you know, that particular question has come up several times from planners today. So I think it is a really important uh, point about how you can really handle that. Um, you know, I think that uh, we had another uh, planner question here. Uh, I think it was from uh, Michael, and he wanted to know, why do some CVBs only send the RFP to certain properties and not to all the properties in the area, Margie? Well, and that's a good question, and I think uh, I, I can speak about San Diego. We only send it to the hotels that match the needs of that planner, and in advance we'll have a conversation with the planner, and if, and if the person is saying, I think I want to see this, this, and this, it's our job to really understand your needs and say, well, that hotel might not fit, but because we're the destination experts and have a broad look at the 134 hotels in our destination, we can say, we think you should also consider this hotel or that hotel, and we'll take you there. Uh, to see it and have that conversation in advance. We're not, um, we're a membership organization, but we in no way have to send or force to send a lead to everybody. So every every bureau really should narrow it down to what meets your needs. What a total waste of time for everyone if they have to send a lead to everybody. It doesn't make sense. So we really do fine tune it to just the hotels that match that or introduce new hotels that, may, that the hotels might not be uh, acquainted with. And in San Diego, and I'm sure many other destinations are this way, we have all grand hotels and you might have your GSO or NSO or third party person, but they may not know about all the wonderful boutique non-branded hotels in our destination or privately owned hotels. And we've done a lot with bringing customers into San Diego over the last year. We've probably brought in about 300 customers on sites. And my favorite thing is when they say to me, I have no idea. I have no idea this was here. And I said, well, then we're bringing you value because now you know. 
great. Excellent. And you know, the one Shima? note on that is that, you know, we, we definitely don't want to flood the hotel's desk, you know, with RFPs that do not match. And that sort of contributes to their inability to get and provide, you know, really complete responses. So tailoring that to the hotels that can meet your needs is very, very important. Um, I think that one one question that Leslie has is, you know, they, they have a citywide uh, got to see a lot of overflow hotels. What's the best way to show those overflow hotels um, in a short amount of time, but still provide that positive experience? If you're using overflow hotels, probably the only thing you need to see is a guest room and maybe a meeting room, maybe. So again, going to the hotels and saying in advance, having your uh, CDB person from the citywide team say, you know, here's the hotels that you need to see and we're, we need to see one room and that you've got 15 minutes. Or on the other hand, some of the things that we've been doing, when we have a lot of hotels to see in a different area, a certain area, we have the hotels come and we do a reverse trade show. We have the planner sit and we have the hotels come and show the pictures and talk to them one-on-one -on -one for five or ten minutes and not wear the customer out by dragging them to hotel, get in and out of the hotel, get out of the door, get in the We just have the hotels come to them and say, here's what you needed to see about my hotel and here's the location. Here, and, and it's easier on the planner. They get the knowledge that they need to do. So we do that a reverse sometimes. That's like a sonic experience, like a drive through like a sonic. Well, I love that. Well, we have the customers in a much more comfortable <laughs> position. Then. Let's get out of the car one more time. And, um, you know, unless, um, uh, Terry, you see another question, I just would like to bring up one more for you, Margie. And Angela's asking, um, what, do you, what in your experience with what planners have expressed to you, how involved do they planners want to see from the CVB? And, and uh, what should planners be asking that CVB? But how involved should they be in the site inspection? I think the tide is turning. Certainly it's changed in San Diego over the eight years I've been there, and I hear from my compatriots at other destinations and from customers that it's changing. You know, the CDB, first of all, is your advocate, and we are the expert, uh, expert destination uh, experts. We know so much. We know people. We know how to get into uh, to connect the right people to the planner to achieve different goals that they have, and we're very involved. Um, when you come to San Diego with a potential meeting and we've identified which hotels you need to see, then we have a site experience team that one person's assigned you, as I mentioned, they pick you up at the airport, they go over the itinerary with you to make sure you're seeing what you need to see, the timing is right, you have the downtime you need to return emails or make phone calls or just to rest. Or in some cases, somebody will say, you know, I've never put my feet in the Pacific Ocean. I think that would be a great thing to do. And the next thing you know, they're driving over to the coastline so the person can put their feet in. Because they are their advocates. They want them, we want you to know that we have your best interest in mind. And it sometimes happens when we're doing a site inspection that as you sit in the car with my team for so long, they get to learn so much about what you really need and some things that you might not have expressed in the past. And it hasn't on occasion been where they said, you know what hotel you really need to see? You go, need to go to the Hard Rock. That's the hotel you need to see if you need this. We call the hotel. We know you're not planned for us to have a site, but we'll be there in 20 minutes. And we have such a good relationship with our hotel partners that you would have thought when you arrived at that hotel 20 minutes later that they've been planning for your arrival for a week or two. So we should be very involved. We're the ones who can step back for you and say this isn't going to work. We're going to move on. And um, we should be very involved, and if you say, I, I can do this on my own, we respect that too, but most people, people want to steal my site inspection team and take them to other cities. So I'm like, <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> so, but I think it's a great advocacy for you. Well, uh, you know, Marty, I, we had uh, Natasha just, just really chime in uh, just um, in the last minute here and says, she asking you, is it really, is it worth going through a CVB with a smaller corporate meeting? Um, and not a large convention. Uh, do CDBs really want to work with uh, the smaller corporate planner? You know, that's a great question, and the answer is yes. Um, and again, I can only speak for San Diego, but you know, we have every city has hotels of all sizes. Uh, a 35 room on peak meeting is huge to many of our hotels. So we have separated our team at the Tourism Authority in San Diego. Anyway, we have a team that works on citywides. 
And then we have another team that is only engaged in non-citywide business. In fact, I have a dozen salespeople working on non-citywide business. And their sweet spot is 35 rooms on peak to 500 rooms on peak, or a little bit more. But when it starts to get into the citywide sides, you know, we turn it over if the convention building can convention center building is needed. But in our world, a 35 room for some of our boutique hotels in that beautiful area of La Jolla Shores, La Jolla Cove, that's golden. So yes, we want all of that. And we can make that whole experience, <clears throat> excuse me, that I've talked about <clears throat> equally as uh, engaging for a 35, 50 room peak meeting, corporate meeting as a you know large citywide. So well, thanks for asking uh, that question. That's really great to know. And Margie, we've had uh, a lot of people chime in that this was a really great session. Thank you very much. And in fact, Nancy says she can't wait for her San Diego site inspection on Monday. <laughs> Perfect. We can't wait to see you. I'm going to come and meet you. <laughs> All right, Shimo, I have I have to comment about this one. Um, this one. Now I can't find you on here. I, I'm looking up and down my question board, but one of our planners said that she enjoys, uh, she does enjoy that glass of Chardonnay in the evening in, in her room, like like, um, like I do, like Margie <laughs> does, um, but you know, she's a little like bummed out when, you know, she goes and there's a whole bottle, she almost feels bad about opening it, um, so I have to throw this one out for Margie, the destination, um, and any of the hoteliers that are on that are listening. Um, I went to a hotel recently, and I was traveling by myself, and the um, GM sent up a little note and said, thank you for staying with us. If you'd like to um, have a glass of wine or any drink in your room this evening, just call our room service, and they'll bring it up complimentary. Perfect. And I, that was so great. You know, I just thought, that is so much better than a big bottle of wine I don't want to open. So I just called up and had one glass of, of wine delivered to my room. So there's my tip of the day. Well, that's a very personalization that means a lot. Shima, any closing thoughts? Well, I think that, you know, it's it's like I, I don't think planners should be afraid to be able to tell their CVB and say, you know, if the hotels are going to put an amenity or something in my room, could you let them know X, what your preference is? And, you know, don't send a whole bottle of wine or don't send up, you know, the beer or whatever. And if you wanted just to have sparkling water, I think that that's a conversation that you should feel comfortable having with your CVB. And then the CVB can make sure that they pass that along. That was Lori. Thank you, Lori. Lori just commented in our co comment box. That, <laughs> comment um, box that she thinks it's better than trying to put those three or four bottles of wine back in her suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> hey, every, and thank you to everyone who registered for this webinar. Um, I'd like to ask a favor. If you would, um, you will receive a recording. Um, a link to a recording, and it would just warm our hearts for you to share this. So many people wrote in that you thought it was so valuable, so if you did, when you get your um, email, send it out. Say, hey, I was on this webinar last week. It was really beneficial, and, and give, it a, give it a look in the webinar recording. So on behalf of DMAI, Empowerment.com, Margie Sitton, and the San Diego Tourism Authority, Chris Wessel, and EPRO Direct, um, we thank you very much, and we look forward to um, seeing you next month. Our next um, month's webinar is going to be um, all about what you can do to keep your room block from being half empty. Mm -hmm. So um, we know that everybody's interested in driving that attendance and filling up those room blocks. So we have a really good presentation next month. Um, you'll also have a link in your follow-up webinar where you can just go right from that email and register for our May webinar. So look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great day. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Margie.